Kia ora fellow travellers, welcome back to Budgeting Borders, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk to you about what sort of licences you need when you first arrive in Australia and you're trying to find work in the construction industry. I'm going to be going through all the basic ones and a few more advanced ones that you can look to get once you've got yourself established and settled in Australia. Let's get into the video. License you're going to need when you arrive in Australia and you're trying to find work in the construction industry is your construction induction card, also known as a white card. It's the most basic license you will need to work on any construction site here in Australia. It's really easy to get. Most of the places that you can get it are online. You just have to do a short online course. It's like maybe an hour, hour and a half tops. Some places also offer like in-class settings that you can do it in. I think they're a little bit more expensive and I don't really see the need to do that. If you can do it online, it's a lot faster and a lot easier. I did mine online. Uh, it took me about an hour, hour and a half total to do everything I needed to do. And what I had to do for mine was do a short online uh, questionnaire. I researched all the answers beforehand. So when it came to the actual test, I just went through it really quickly, answered the questions, no problems. And the second part of the license that I had to do was record myself putting on construction safety equipment. So it's pretty simple. You just have to put on a hard hat, put on some safety goggles, put on some gloves, and you just have to record yourself doing this. Upload it to the website along with your results from your test. And that's it. Within a couple of days, they'll send you your actual physical card. And that's it. That's all you have to do. I believe mine cost me about $69 roughly. So... That's, that's roughly how much it's going to cost you, between sort of $50 and $80, depending on which website you use or which company you use. And it's super simple and easy to get. First one you're going to get is always going to be that card, because to get most of your other licenses, you're going to need that card. Now, the next license I want to talk to you about is your first aid license. Here's mine here. You can see it's got two different parts. You've got your basic first aid and your basic CPR. There's also intermediate and advanced levels, which you can do later on if you want. Or if you're confident, you can jump straight to advanced. Having an advanced license does look better on your CV and some companies do require you to have your advanced. But in general, having just your basic CPR and your basic first aid is enough to work on any construction site. Most construction sites don't even need a first aid, but this will just give you preference when you're looking for work. Now, uh, the CPR course that I did cost me about $80 for the, both the CPR and the basic first aid. It was a package deal. It was a lot cheaper. I think it normally goes between sort of $100 and $120. It took me about four hours to do the course. So we went in the morning, we did some training, the, the teacher told us how to do everything that we needed to do. We did a practical and I believe a little theory test and then that was it. So I think it was done by about like midday and that was it, super easy, didn't take long, absolutely worth it when you're trying to find work here in Australia. Another license that I really liked and was one of the first ones that I got when I arrived here in Australia was my traffic management license. Now, when I used to live in Sydney, I saw a lot of people doing traffic management and they were going on about how much money they made and how good it was. They get paid to just stand in the middle of the road and hold a, a stop and go sign and they got paid, you know, $30, $35 an hour to do this. And I just never got around to, to getting my, my traffic management license because I had found a good job doing labor in Sydney at the time. But when I arrived in Perth, I was looking for extra work. I wanted to make some extra money, so I got myself my traffic management license. Now, like the first aid, there are different aspects of traffic management. You can see I've got your basic worksite traffic management and your traffic controller. Now, you usually will get both in a package deal again like the first aid. You can get them separately if you want, or maybe you've already got one and you just want to get the other one. So that is an option, but it's cheaper to get the package deal. So I believe I paid around $350 to $380 for both the traffic controller and the basic worksite traffic management. This course is a three-day course. The first two days are doing your training, and the last day is a little bit of training, and then you do your tests. So day one, we covered all the theory, uh, all the theory information that you need to know for the theory test. It's a little bit boring. It's a lot of just sitting there, listening to the guy talk, and you just got to pay attention and learn it all. You do a little bit of study in the evening if you if you're not confident. You know, do a little bit of research on your, by yourself. Day two, you do your practical training. So we went out to like a small abandoned road, and we just practiced stopping, slowing. You know, letting a few cars go through. We, we, we had about maybe 10 people in our, in our class and two of us would take turns uh, controlling the traffic and the other ones would sit and watch and then someone would be in the car driving back and forward up and down the road. And we just sort of practice with the signs, practice putting out the traffic cones, practice on the radios. 
that was a little bit more fun than the first day. And then day three we came in, we got one more turn at practicing the practical, going over the theory stuff, and then in the last part of the day we did your, your theory test and your practical test. Uh, it was super easy, everyone on my course passed first time except for one person. That one person was a little bit stupid though, so everyone sort of expected them not to pass, but after I think three times they eventually got through. But seriously, anyone with common sense can pass this test, it's really not very difficult. It looks like a lot when you look at all the theory work that you have to, to do and have to memorize, but it's really not that difficult. Um, so traffic management is a really good one to get. It will get you better jobs. If you're just doing general labor hire work, you're looking at around sort of a $25 mark per hour. Traffic management is usually gonna be a minimum of $30 to 35, sometimes even 40 if you're working sort of civil or main roads. So traffic management is another good license to get. I've used it quite a bit since I've been here in Perth and I'm really happy that I got it. It was definitely worth the investment. Now the next license that I got was my forklift license. And the reason I got my forklift license is I just wanted to drive a forklift. Um, I had heard that there was sort of a lot of job opportunities for forklift license, so that was a little bit of a push. It is a little bit more expensive. I believe it costs around 300-ish, $350 for the training and for the tests. And you've also got to pay $100 per year to uh, keep your high-risk work license for the forklift. So forklift is categorized as a high risk job. So you have to have a specific sort of license for that. Along with things like working at heights or working in confined spaces, these are all forms of high risk work. And for each one of those licenses, you have to pay a yearly fee to keep that license. Um, I don't really understand why they do that. It's a bit strange. Maybe it's a bit of a money grab, but you just have to do it to keep your license. So I think I paid, total was about $400. I, I got a, a discount because I'd already booked previous courses through this company and every time I booked a course they would give me like a 15% voucher. So at the moment I believe the course for the forklift license is around $470 total with the high risk work license. So it is a little bit more expensive and the reason it's a bit more expensive is again because it's a high risk work license but you're also going to be working, if you're, if you're getting a job as a forklift operator you're probably going to be getting a little bit of a higher wage depending on how much experience you have and where you're going to be working. When I first got my license, I started working in a factory. The pay was about $32 an hour for someone who had no experience on a forklift. So that was sort of the base level for someone who's got their license but no experience. If you're working, say, FIFO and you're doing forklifts on a FIFO mine site, you're probably going to be getting around the $35 to $40 mark. So it's a good one to get if, if you're interested in that sort of thing. If you like driving around on forklifts, it's a good one. The course was, a, I believe it was another three-day course. And it was a, a day of theory, a day of practical, and then the last day was theory, practical, and then doing the test. Everyone in my course passed first time. Pretty easy. Again, the theory stuff is really boring and, and just, you know, you're just sitting in a classroom for a whole day. It is very, very boring. But day two was really fun. You get to drive around forklifts all day long, picking up pallets, moving them around. It was really, really interesting. Um, and then day three, you get one more sort of turn on the forklift, and then you go for your test. Everyone passed, like I said, so it is easy, it is doable. If you've got the money to do it and you're looking to, to drive around a forklift all day, it is, in my opinion, it's one of the most fun jobs because it's just so much fun driving around a forklift all day, moving stuff around. It's pretty easy, it's not hard work, you're not you know, lifting bricks or digging holes. So as far as the construction industry goes, if you're operating machinery, definitely one of my favorite jobs. Now another license that I haven't personally got, but I would definitely recommend it to you if you're just arriving in Australia. It will help you get more jobs, there will be a lot more opportunities if you're a labourer, and that is your working at heights and working in confined spaces ticket. They are separate tickets, but again, almost every company that I've found will do a combo deal when you, when you get them together you get a, a better price. It is worth it, these two licences are probably one of the most used licences as a labourer. Every time I'm looking for labour hire work, I always get asked, do you have high risk, uh, Do you have your working at heights or working in confined spaces license? And I never do. It, I, I've never struggled to find work without it, but just the amount of opportunities I've missed because I haven't got it, I would definitely recommend it to you. Again, these licenses all seem to be around the similar sort of price. I think it was about $350 to $400 for the working at heights and the confined spaces together. You can probably get them separate for around like $150 to $200 each if you wanted to do it just, you know, one. And they are, they are a good license to have. Working at heights, I don't know what the course entails for the, for the working at heights and for the confined spaces. It's about a three day course. I would imagine that it's like the rest of them. First day is going to be theory, second day is going to be practical, third day is just going to be 
you know, revising, you're practicing your theory, and then doing your test at the end of the day. So they don't take very long to get. They are a little bit expensive, but these licenses will help you a lot if you're trying to find work as a laborer or trying to find work in the construction industry here in Australia. Now, if you're afraid of heights or confined spaces, you're probably not going to want to get this license, and that's completely understandable. There are obviously lots of other options, and you will find work here in Australia, even if you don't have this license. Another license that you could get that is involved with working heights is working on an elevated work platform, or EWP. This is basically, you've probably seen them, you might call them a scissor lift or an EWP. It's just a big platform that's on wheels, and it's got like a scissor lift part that lifts up a platform so you can work at things you know that are you know you can paint a roof or something like that and uh, they're used a lot in construction sites you will see them all the time when you're working if you want to get your license for this it costs about three hundred dollars for your EWP just by itself or you can get a license that has your EWP your scissor lift and your boom lift so they're all separately you know they're all technically different but they all basically do the same thing they're machines that lift somebody up in a platform to work on a high space or work on something above you uh, they're really useful to have. I've, I've not got it myself. Um, I have operated them before back home in New Zealand. We didn't need a license and we just used them. Here in Australia, you've got to have a license for everything, so you won't be allowed to use them here. I have got a few missed opportunities because I haven't got this license. So it's another one you want to get if you're just trying to find work and you just want more options basically as a labourer. Now like the rest of these licenses, it's a three-day course I believe. So the first day is obviously going to be your theory, second day is going to be your practical, and third day is going to be your test. So they don't take long to get these licenses, they are a little bit expensive, so if you haven't got a lot of money when you first arrive here in Australia, start with your white card, you have to have that to work on any construction site. Then get your first aid, it's pretty cheap, and then when you've got a little bit of money saved, look at getting the next licenses. You'll, when, you've, when you've worked on a few construction sites, you can see what sort of work you're going to be doing, you can see you know, someone that's working at heights, you can see someone that's doing traffic, you can see what you want to do, and then you can get a license for that. I don't recommend getting all these different licenses just because you want a lot of licenses. They cost a lot of money, and especially if you're getting a lot of high-risk work licenses, you've got to pay that $100 per year for each license. So if you've got your confined spaces, you're working at heights, your forklift, and your EWP, you're paying $400 a year just to keep all those licenses. If you're not using those every day, if you're not driving EWP, if you're not doing traffic management, if you're not doing a forklift every day or every week, those licenses are wasted. So find one that you want to do or find a job that requires a license then get the license for that. Don't just get every single one unless you've got lots of money and you just really like having licenses. I've got three licenses. I've got my forklift, I've got my basic traffic management, I've got my first aid and I've not really used my forklift license that much. I've used it for a couple, couple weeks in a factory using the forklift and then here and there in FIFO I've used my forklift ticket every now and then. I've used a lot of traffic management and first aid I've used a lot as well. But if I was going to go back, I probably wouldn't have done my forklift license. As much as I love driving around a forklift, I just haven't used it enough to be worth paying that much money for it. And now I've got to pay $100 every year just to keep the license, or it's even, or, or I lose it and I have to redo the test again if I want to get it back. So think about what licenses you're going to want. There's a lot of different ones here in Australia that you can get. The ones I've mentioned are just the basic ones you'll need if you're not even need these are just the basic ones that you can get as a labourer or a construction worker here in Australia there's a lot more advanced things like getting your crane operating ticket getting your bulldozer or heavy plant machinery sort of tickets there's, there's a lot of different ones that are more advanced another good one to mention is your truck driving license this one's a little bit more expensive but you will get a lot better pay and there's a lot of job opportunities for truck drivers especially doing FIFO work so that's the next thing I'm looking to get is my uh, HR license or heavy rigid license it's called. It just allows you to drive big trucks. Your pay is usually between sort of $40 to $50 per hour depending if you're working in the city or working on the mine sites. But it costs between sort of $1,000 to $1,400 to $1,800 for the actual license itself. So that's something I'm sort of saving up for when I'm going to use it. When I can find a job that I want, I'm going to get that license and hopefully make a bit more money. Well, that's basically it for today, guys. Those are all the main licenses that you'll be looking for as a construction worker or a labourer here in Australia. I'll put links in the description below to the websites that I've used to get my licenses. You can go there or you can find one in the city that you're in. 
One of the things I mentioned guys about licenses, some of them are state dependent. So if you're in WA, some of your licenses will only be valid here in WA unless you get it converted over to say New South Wales. That's just because some of the states have different regulations. So things like traffic management here in Western Australia is a lot different to traffic management in Queensland. So just make sure you're paying attention. If you're, if you're getting a license, make sure you're using that license in the correct state. If you're swapping states, just make sure that you can use your license in this new state that you've moved to. Most states will have some, some way to convert that license across without having to redo the whole course again and pay a whole bunch of money again. But just make sure you keep that in mind when you're getting your licenses. But apart from that guys, that's all I've got to say for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me some comments below. If you've got any questions, if you've got any other videos that you want me to do, leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time guys, see you later. Uh, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos related to travel and work.